Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to my Adventures in Pure Mathematics series. Now today, I want to give you a brief introduction to a subject known as algebraic geometry. Now this is a really rich and beautiful subject and it's hard to do justice to it in a really short video, um, but I'll try nevertheless. Um, it's a really rich subject because it has very deep traditions which go back to the ancient Greek studies of conics and to Riemann's uh, geometric uh, view of complex analysis. Uh, nevertheless, I'll try to uh, describe it as best as I can. And at the risk of oversimplifying things, I think it's fair to say that algebraic geometry is the study of solutions to polynomial equations. Now, fortunately, you would have studied linear equations in your linear algebra class, which means that to a certain extent, you know a little bit about algebraic geometry already. And it's instructive to look at the linear algebra th that you already know so that we can go from there and see what happens when you study not just linear equations, but higher order equations as well. Okay, so to set things up, what we'll do is we'll start with some field, which I'll denote like this with the double barrel F. And we'll look at the set of all ordered pairs X, Y, where X and Y range over the field F. Okay, so uh, I'll denote the set of all these ordered pairs with F2 and the subscript X and Y, just to remind ourselves that uh, these are the coordinates that we use. Okay, so what's the simplest linear equation that you can think of? of? It'll be something like 2X minus 3Y equals 1, okay? And we all know what that looks like. It's just a line, okay? So it's a line inside the XY plane, like that. Okay, so uh, what about uh, something more complicated? Okay, so what's the next thing that you would look at? Well, let's suppose in, now we have three variables, x, y, and z, and we can look at an, another linear equation, like 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 5. And for good measure, let's suppose we add another linear equation, like 3x plus 3y minus z equals 7. Again, we know the answer from linear algebra as to what the simultaneous solutions to these two equations are. The solution, which now lives inside F3, their sets of triples in x, y, and z, is still a line. And the thing to note in this case is that there are two ways to see the answer. And this is something that you should know well from your linear algebra class. So the first way of looking at this is algebraic, where you use Gaussian elimination, you uh, eliminate variables, and then you work out what the solutions are, and the answer turns out to be a line. That's the algebraic method. The second way of looking at it is geometric. You can look at the solutions to the first linear equation, and that carves out some sort of a plane inside xyz space. Look at the second one, it gives you a second plane inside xyz space, and the intersection of these two, since these two planes are not parallel, the normal, uh, normals to these two planes are not parallel, that means they intersect in a line. And one of the really nice things about linear algebra is there's this beautiful interplay between the algebra on one hand and the geometry on the other. And one of the things about algebraic geometry is that this interplay between the algebra and geometry runs much deeper and it gets much prettier when you move from linear equations to higher order equations. And that's the thing that I want to try to suggest in this short video today. Okay, so before we move on, I want to just make sure that we're all clear about what we mean by lines. So what's a line in Fn? Well, there are things which have parametric form. x equals a plus lambda v, where a and v are some fixed vectors inside Fn, determined by the line. And this lambda is a parameter which varies over all the elements inside the field. And the thing to note from this parametric form is that all lines, they look more or less the same. Sure, you can change this V around, change the direction of the line, and you can slide the line around a bit by changing this A, but otherwise they look more or less the same. And we mathematicians have a technical way of saying that. We say that in the sense all lines are isomorphic to each other.
Well, to study algebraic geometry, we need to introduce more tools from algebra, and in particular, some of the tools that you would have met in your first modern algebra course. And in particular, the important one for us today, and the first one that you usually meet, is called the coordinate ring. So the basic idea here is that if you want to study a geometric object, one way to do that is to look at functions on that geometric object. And since we're doing algebraic geometry, the functions that we'll be interested in are the algebraic ones. And in this case, this just means polynomial functions or more generally rational functions. So let's just start uh, with some basic examples. That's probably the best way to learn about this concept. And the simplest uh, geometric object is just the affine line F1x. Okay, so you're just looking at a single line. And here we want to look at functions on that. So we're just looking at functions of a single variable. And we want to look at algebraic functions. So it makes sense to define the coordinate ring of this f1x just to be the polynomials in that single variable x. So let's just denote it like that. Polynomials in x with coefficients in our field f. OK, easy enough. Now let's look at the next complicated case, which is the plane, the xy plane here. What's the coordinate ring of that? I hope you can guess. Uh, we denote it like this, and the functions that we want are of two variables, x and y, and they're the polynomial functions. So this is the ring of polynomial functions in x and y. And as you can see, they're both rings, and in fact, they're both algebras over this field f. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. So the subject of algebraic geometry, remember, is to look at solutions to polynomial equations, such as this one here, x squared plus y squared equals 1, which in this case gives a circle. And we want to say uh, what the algebraic functions on this curve are. Well, I guess one way to get an algebraic function is you just look at a function which is defined on the whole plane, like a polynomial in x and y, and just restrict it to this curve. Right? A polynomial in, the, um, in x and y gives you a function on the whole plane, so given any point inside here, you get a value, and so you can just restrict the inputs to this curve. So that means a good starting point, at least, is going to be polynomials in x and y. Okay, that's all well and good. But let's look at the following polynomial, x squared plus y squared minus 1. What happens when you restrict this polynomial to this curve here? When you restrict this to the curve, what you'll find is that because you're on the curve of all the points x, y, which satisfy this equation, the only values you get are zero. So this is also zero. So in this case, we have to equate x squared plus y squared minus 1 with zero. And in fact, any polynomial whose values are always zero here should be equated with zero. For example, if I multiply this polynomial with any other polynomial, and get anything inside the whole ideal generated by x squared plus y squared minus 1, they'll all be 0. So in this case, the coordinate ring we should use is in fact this quotient ring here. So let's go back to our line from before, L, which was defined by the single linear equation 2x plus 3y equals 1. Now we noted before that all lines in the xy plane are isomorphic to each other. So one expects that, that the coordinate rings of all lines are going to be isomorphic as well. So let's see how that plays out in this particular example here. We'll look at the simplest line possible first, which is the affine line here. And its coordinate ring, we said, was just a polynomial ring in one variable x. The coordinate ring of L, however, we also saw how to find that. We look at the polynomials in two variables, x and y, and we have to quotient out by the ideal that gives us this line. 
And of course, that's just the ideal generated by, uh, we re rearrange this into 2x plus 3y minus 1. So in this case, there is in fact a ring isomorphism, and in fact it's an f-linear ring isomorphism, and it's quite easy to see what it is. Let me show you. Here, we need to send a polynomial in x to a coset of a polynomial in x and y. And in fact, it's just the same polynomial, p of x. And remember to take the coset of that. It's quite easy to check that this is a ring isomorphism. And we see almost immediately that it's linear over f. So to check it's a ring isomorphism, we just need to use our isomorphism theorems. OK, so let's go through slowly. First thing we need to check is that the kernel is 0, so that the map is injective. Well, what's in the kernel here? Well, we need to find a polynomial x, such that when you map it over here, it's in this ideal. So it's a multiple of 2x plus 3y minus 1. Of course, 0 is such a polynomial. But are there other polynomials? Well, the point is that any non-zero polynomial, which is a multiple of this, has to have some y term in there. So that means the kernel must be zero, and the map is injective. The second thing we need to check is whether this map is surjective. So which cosets do you hit? Well, certainly you hit all those cosets of polynomials in x. But can you also get y? Once you have all polynomials x and y, since the image is a subring of this, you'll get the whole of this ring. So how do you get y inside here? Well, the point is that you can rewrite y using this linear equation in terms of a polynomial in x. And that shows you that y, or rather the coset containing y, is in the image of this map. And so this map is also subjective. So what's the point of this uh, isomorphism? Well, the point is that the coordinate ring is a way that allows us to give a ring theoretic reformulation of this simple fact that all lines in F2 are isomorphic to each other. And this is one of the many ways that more advanced algebraic ideas, such as rings, can be used uh, to study algebraic geometry. So that's the story with lines. It's easy enough, and it just reinforces what you already know in your linear algebra class. So let's consider the next interesting case, which of course is when you look at quadratic equations. So an equation like q of xy equals 0, where q of xy is quadratic. Now the situation gets a lot more interesting in this case. So the first simple example is where this is a product of two linear equations. Then each linear equation defines a line, maybe the same line, parallel lines, or intersecting lines. And the zeros of this quadratic are then just the union of those two lines. But if you're irreducible, then you get something else. You get a conic. And now the answer depends critically on what the field is. So it's interesting that if you play around with lines, changing the field doesn't change too much your answer. But once you go to higher order equations, that's no longer true. So for example, if you look over the real numbers and you look at ellipses, they're quite different from hyperbole. And that's because they're not isomorphic over the reals. However, they are isomorphic when you look over the complex numbers. So often, to start with, when you do algebraic geometry, you work over algebraically closed fields. What gets even more interesting is that for these conics, they're actually isomorphic to lines up to just a couple of points. This is a very interesting fact. And one way to see this is that there's a nice parameterization of these conics, just as we had a parameterization for lines. So you can ask, OK, so that's the quadratic situation. What about cubic polynomials and solutions to cubic polynomials, so cubic curves? Well, in this case, the answer becomes much more interesting and sophisticated. And that's why you need so many sophisticated tools from algebra to study it. 
So in particular, there's no nice parametrization of cubic curves in general. They're not isomorphic to lines, even to up to a couple of points. And in fact, they're not usually isomorphic to each other either. 